Hey, you too. Hey, Kirkpatrick. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, Fourth of July. Yep. We celebrate our independence. Yeah, most people grill and chill, shoot off fireworks, but anyway. Uh, I'm going to do something a little different tonight. <clears throat> and some of y'all may click away. That's cool. It's okay. And YouTube may show this, and I may uh, have the interest of a few, few other people. But uh, I'm going to do with this old gun tonight. Because it's 4th of July. And, uh, yeah, if we didn't have guns, we would not have won our independence. Think about that. All right, so uh, I'm going to spin the camera down here a little bit but before, before i get started <clears throat> i mean gun safety let's talk about it for a minute <clears throat> uh four rules of gun safety always treat a gun as if it's loaded always keep the muzzle that's the business end pointed in a safe direction never pointed at anything you don't want to shoot always know your target and what's behind it and uh, keep your finger off the trigger till you're ready to actually go pow. Yeah. It's a safe sport if you practice those four rules. So anyhow, <clears throat> yeah, so I want to get that out of the way. And all the guns you're fixing to see here, <clears throat> where the algorithm's going crazy in here, guns, guns, guns. <laughs> you're fixing to see here <clears throat> are unloaded. And they've been checked and rechecked and rechecked. They are unloaded. There's no ammunition nowhere near me. Well, 10 feet maybe, but that's nowhere near my reach. So, all right, here we go. <clears throat> Tonight we're going to talk about a uh, cowboy gun. Y'all see I like cowboy stuff, so, you know. Uh, the Colt Single Action Army was probably what... <clears throat> uh his iconic cowboy gun but uh right right near uh world war uh two colt quit making them they went into other productions you know and old man ruger <clears throat> who just got started i think in 49 his first pistol was the uh ruger mark one Anyway, it's a little semi-auto shoot. I ought to have one out, but I don't. But anyway, uh, he saw a market for cowboy guns, so he came out in 1953, I believe it is, with his version of the Single Action Army. He came out, his first gun was the Single Six. Yeah, 53. 55, he came out with the 44 Mag. And then later he got named the Black Hawk. <clears throat> But anyway, the first the first one he uh, single action type army copy he made was uh, in the single six, which is a six shooter, twenty two long rifle, and then later he added the twenty two magnum to it. So I'm gonna uh, point this down here just a little bit. Yeah, here we go. <clears throat> That's what we got here. What we got going on. Uh, well, I'm going to keep that right there. I'm going to pick up this one right here. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right, this model right here is one of the very first models. As you see, it's got the three screws, which is the same action as the Colt had. And it's a four-click action going back. You hear them four clicks? And the hammer drops uh, straight down. Hammer drops straight down on that firing pin right there. Yep. Hits that firing pin right there. Here we go. Wow. <clears throat> the gun was unsafe to carry with all six, cha six chambers loaded. Because if something bumped the hammer... It would hit the firing pin and would go off. <clears throat> now, one of Ruger's 
claim to fame was he came up with some casting uh, technology that was new for the time. And I say casting, that's casting metals, and in particular his was aluminum. And as you see, this here gun is, this here gun is, it came out in 53, but this is a 56 model. And this one's in Magnum only. Later on, he came out with a convertible, which would shoot 22 long rifle and 22 Magnum. And this is straight up uh, 22 Magnum. All right. This part right here is called the pistol grip. This part right here is the trigger housing. Well, he made all this in one piece. And to save money, he made it out of aluminum. So that's why you see it's kind of a little shinier. It was originally black, but over the years, it, the paint's come off of this one. Yeah, it has. And also, a little later on, the injection rod shroud right here was made out of aluminum. Now, this one's not. Here's an old light flashlight. You know, it's got a magnet. You hear it? You hit it hard. Yep, so this was still steel. <clears throat> in uh, 56 and uh, the gun the chambers on it are uh, I'm getting that right there where you can see it well yep old single action I'm used you gotta cock it twice then the cylinder will rotate <clears throat> by the way <clears throat> Cylinders rotate in different directions. I've seen guns, uh, cylinders go counterclockwise, and I've seen guns, cylinders go clockwise. How can you tell which way a cylinder is, is rotating? Just by looking at this little thing right here. Yeah. Whichever way it's pointed, it looks like a little bullet, don't it? Which way it's pointed is the way it's going to rotate. See? Yeah. Anyhow, <clears throat> also the loading gate, was also later on made out of aluminum. That one's steel, as you can tell. <clears throat> but uh, they did, and still do today, uh, recess the chambers. I don't know if that's going to show. Well, maybe it does. Anyway, there's a slight recess to where the... Uh, rim of the bullet fits down in a little pocket and that helps hold a bullet in place a little better and makes for a little better accuracy so that's fixed sight rear unless you took a hammer and hit on it and then a small blade front sight yeah so that's uh, a model of uh, Ruger's first single six. <clears throat> and then later on, <clears throat> he came up with a transfer bar safety. Now this particular one here, right here is in stainless. Uh, and you don't see any screws. He changed the action. To be a safer action. You don't have that characteristic four clicks going back. You just got two. Real quick. And if you'll notice the uh, hammer here, it's got little indentations in it. Let me get where you can see. Because the hammer falls onto a transfer bar yeah that little bar right there hits the fire pin that's behind it so when the hammer drops and the trigger fully depressed transfer bar stays up the hammer hits the transfer bar it hits the firing pin boom but, now this is hard to show because it happens so quick. But I'm 
gonna try to get this where I drop the hammer and you see the transfer bar starting to slide down it's, it's exposing the firing pin but don't worry remember the hammer is notched out so it won't hit the firing pin but anyway that little transfer bar drops so if you hit this real hard with a hammer it ain't gonna go off because it don't touch the firing pin it has to have the transfer bar To hit the fire pin. Neat, ain't it? And also, this is rather a, a, a modern, more modern one now, as you see they're starting to use, uh, uh, what do you call that? I don't know, laminated wood, you know, uh, uh, fancy plywood, but anyway. Uh, but they are starting to put little sculptures in their uh, grips out right here, as you kind of see that sculptures now. It's kind of swole up right in there. Yeah. Makes hand grip what they call purchase. Yeah. When I purchased a firearm, that's when I bought it. But now if you purchase a firearm, you're actually picking it up to, to use it. Uh, so, yeah, very sweet gun. And there are a couple of parts on here that are steel. That's, of course, the rear sight, which is totally adjustable for elevation and the left to right movement. There's the elevation screw right there. And the left to right is handled by the screw right here on the end. And then you got the fixed front sight, which is rather large. If you remember the first one it came out with, see there, just a low piece of curved metal. This is rather large. It's actually screwed into the barrel. And of course, it's, it's made out of steel not stainless because it's blue yep anyway that's the 22 magnum cylinder in this and uh, here's a view of the uh, 22 long rifle it was, hence this is a convertible you swap these out but as I was saying earlier the uh, cylinder walls loading, uh, loading area is, is, is chafered so the uh, the the shell and the bullet rest all the way uh, flush and flat, and a lot of your cheaper copies don't do that, and and you'll notice it too, especially when you shoot magnums, you'll you'll feel what I call spit, a little bit of hot powder hits you back of your hand. Yeah, it will. All right, now I'm gonna show y'all a freak. <laughs> Here's one they made with a nine and a half inch barrel. Jesus, we were going to do something like it. Anyway, he did it. Now, this one right here, of course, is blue. And it's had some pack more grips added to it. Of course, you don't see any three screws. This is newer 1973 and up action. This is stiff, though. Gonna hit me shot much at all. Uh. And this is convertible. You got your uh, 22 long rifle, and I've got the 22 Magnum cylinder in there. Uh, no, no, no. That's the 22 Magnum cylinder. And then here's the uh, 22 long rifle. And I noticed something about the 22 long rifle that was different than all the other uh, convertible. Now, this gun right here is made in about 19. 82 and the reason i know that is because uh all the all you, your firearms you buy today they gonna have a you know the manufacturer's name and where it was produced at but and also like this newer model right here i know y'all can't see this but i'll read it to you it's gonna have on there one of them disclaimers that said read instruction book before operating this firearm to cover their grits, if you know what I'm saying. Well, this one don't have that. They didn't start that to 83. So I know this one is from 82 back. Ain't quite sure yet. The serial number's got a lot of zeros in it, too. I Kind of weird. I mean, he's less a first run or the end of the run. By the hammer after I'd say it was the end of the run. But uh, here again, uh, 
Ruger's starting to use more aluminum, so all the trigger housing and the grip strap, that's all aluminum. Even the loading gate, I pulled it out. And the uh, flashlight. Uh oh. Okay, that loading gate right there is a uh, steel. Didn't realize that. You usually aluminum about that age. Anyhow, uh, same convenient deal. Elevation left to right on the rear sight. And the uh, bladed front sight. Not quite as big though. There's a newer model, not quite as long. Uh, now, nine and a half inches is about like shooting a little bit of rifle. You prop this thing up on a stump or something, and level down on something real good out there about a hundred yards, you may hit it with this thing. You show them by. Anyway, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Uh, that's the uh, Ruger's number second gun, the Ruger Signal 6, 22, and later convertible to 22 and 22 Magnum. Very popular cowboy. Great for plinking out there, you know, shooting uh, empty water bottles and uh, aluminum cans. Yep, just don't shoot no rocks. Yeah, they ricochet. Found that out the hard way one time. Yeah, dude. All right, gang. Thanks for stopping by, Ed Kirkpatrick. God bless everybody. And uh, like I said, just a little history lesson. You may get into it. You may not. Uh, but I'm sure there's some folks out there that, you know, like to know a little of this stuff. Stay safe. God bless. Bye.